Right. The barbecue sauce consists of smoked paprika, um, onion, celery, uh, it'll be the ends of the red pepper and the green beans that we're using to serve it as well, um, herbs, uh, ketchup, and really you don't need to chop this as fine as you would as you need to with meatloaf because this is going to be blitzed down. Just going to add some water. There's also dates in here to give it the sweetness that you need for the barbecue sauce. We've used dates rather than sugar. So you're going to cut the ends of the green beans for presentation anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so you're just chopping the ends off both sides. And it is edible. Yes. Most people throw them away, don't they? Yeah, they would just throw it away, but they're, they're perfectly good for sauces. Just throw them in. It doesn't need to look pretty at this stage because, like I say, it's going to be blitzed up anyway. Now, what you need the, green, the red pepper for is the rings to go with the wheels to make wheels on here. So we're going to take, so just to make it look nice, we're going to go to the middle. And then we'll just use this part to go in the sauce to give it some extra flavour. Now, when we make the meatloaf, we'll be using herbs thyme and parsley, but really we'll not be using the stalks, so I'll just put the stalks in as well just to give it that extra flavour. It's a lot of flavour that, like you say, would just be thrown away. A little bit extra water, because as it's cooking it will reduce a little bit anyway. Once it's all softened, and the dates are softened, we'll then just whiz it up and pass it through a sieve to make a sauce. Now we're going to start to prepare the meatloaf. Right, the meatloaf consists of pork and beef mince, for equal quantities. We have um, finely diced uh, onions, celery, and garlic. And you want that quite fine because when it goes into the meatloaf you don't really want little bits of, uh, big bits of onion or celery in it. Now we're going to dry fry this, so I'm just going to put a slight bit of water in it just to stop it from sticking to the bottom. The bread crumbs, now I'm using a brown bread here, but you can use any bread. You can, as long as it's not seeded, you don't want seeded bread really, so white, brown, wholemeal. Stale bread is best for bread crumbs, yeah. Now, in the meatloaf, we have some tomato ketchup, good old tomato ketchup, and a grind of pepper. No salt, because as you know, we can't use salt in schools. A little bit of Worcestershire sauce. A little bit of egg to bind it. So, we're going to use parsley. You want this quite finely chopped, as you don't really want to be a big piece of parsley in your mouth as you're eating into this yummy meatloaf. And some thyme. That's it, so we're just chopping that up. And then we're just gonna give that a mix. It's quite, quite easy just to get in there with your hands, to be honest. I find it mixes up a lot easier. Two meats mix in a bit easier then too. So we're just gonna sweat down the um, celery, finely chopped celery, onions and garlic together. Just to take the crunch off. And by having a little bit of water in there, there as well, it, it retains the moisture as well, so it's, uh, it's going to also add to the moisture for the meatloaf. Now with this sauce, what we need is for the dates to soften and the vegetables and the green beans that are in there to soften, so that when we whiz it up, it gets quite a lot of the flavour out of it. I'm just going to add that to the meatloaf mixture. looks thoroughly mixed now. No salt in that either? There's no salt in that at all. You're just getting the flavour from the herbs and the garlic 
and the Worcestershire sauce and the tomato puree and from the meat as well because you don't want to completely lose the flavour of the meat that's there too. Because it's only a, it's, it's a smaller portion for the sizing for primary schools so I wanted it to look like a proper loaf. So that's why I've put the foil in there. So it actually reduces the size of the tin. I couldn't get a tin that was the right size. <laughs> now, if, you, if you're making it um, in your uh, school, you can use a two-pound loaf tin because you'll be making it in a much larger uh, quantity. So if you use a two-pound loaf tin or any tin that you've got and then just slice it, which will be e easier for large-scale large scale catering. And that can now go into the oven. Right, that's reduced down a little bit now and all the vegetables and the dates are nice and soft. So what we'll do with that is um, blitz it. <laughs> right. Just need to want to squeeze as much of the juice out of all the vegetables that you've got in there. You don't want to lose any of that flavour. And then you just pop that back onto the stove to heat through. And that's your nice, smooth, flavoursome sauce. What we're going to do now is just prepare the green wheel and red pepper wheels. So you gather together the beans that you're using into your fist, like this. And then you just get your red pepper wheels and you place them over the end. And that'll keep them secure. And then that's two of the five a day. And looks good for children. That's it, and that's your green beans and red pepper wheels. Um, how did you cook them? We'll steam these. So we'll just steam them until they're just cooked. If you don't have a steamer? If you don't have a steamer, then just pop them, well, just do you cook them separately. Cook your green beans into, into a saucepan. And then also your red pepper wheels. They can actually just go into the oven and just be slightly roasted. But your green beans, you wouldn't put those in the oven. So, and then just put them together afterwards once they're cooked. So there's the Ayrshire new potatoes. So we're just going to put them into the steamer. But you can cook them in boiling water until they're just tender. As you're simmering the sauce, it's actually thickening up as well. So just keep an eye on it to make sure it's not sticking at the bottom. Right, so that's the meatloaf. And this is the Ayrshire new potatoes. And our red pepper and green bean wheels and then just spoon some of this rich reduced sauce over the top of the meatloaf and a final touch is some chopped green parsley on your Ayrshire potatoes and meatloaf